Hello, my name's John Peel, and uh, I've been listening to records ever since my dad gave me his record collection, the Savoy Orphans, Charlie Coons, that sort of thing, when he came back from the Second World War. Since then, I've had loads of favourites over the years. Frankie Lane, uh, Gene Vincent, Dwayne Eddy, The Yardbirds, Otis Redding, Captain Beefheart, of course, Country Joe and the Fish, uh, Pink Floyd, Little Feet, The Faces, uh, The Undertones, Lee Perry, Ranking Trevor, Diblo Dybala. But The Fall have given me more pleasure over a longer period of time than any other band. And when people ask me why, I always say gnomically, they're always different, they're always the same. I'm not sure that that means anything, but it sounds reasonably good. Uh, they're just the fall, the band by which in our house all the others are judged. We are the fall, we were spinning, we were stepping. Cop out, cop out, as in from heaven. The difference between you and us is that we have brains. Cause we're not the white crap, but we uh, talk back. The northern white crap that talks back. This was how Marquis e. Smith announced the fall to the disbelieving punk audiences in the spring of 77. Using a mixture of art school nihilism and working class slang, Smith quickly established himself as a natural innovator. His ordinary appearance was perceived as an anti-fashion statement, immediately setting him apart from the numerous punk copyists of the era. Smith's self-confidence, backed by obvious intelligence, guaranteed him a constant flow of column inches and front cover stories in the music press. The fall could never belong to Trend or Cleek. They were out on their own, and 17 years later, still are. As most punk bands fell by the wayside due to lack of any real talent or ideas, the fall, fueled by Smith's vision and work ethic, carved out a major cult following across the world. Like the Velvets in the 60s, they became the seminal underground band of the time. I'm totally wired. Unaffected by the musical fads and fashions of the 80s, Smith continued on his own course, drawing inspiration from literature, art, cinema and a host of diverse musical influences, from the avant-garde of Germany's can to late 60s American bubblegum. To be honest, uh, I don't relate to other groups. I'm never, we never have. I'm, I'm coming round to this again. I mean, maybe I got lost a couple of years ago, but it sticks out more now than it ever does, you know, it ever did. I'm totally wired. Uh, I'm totally wired. Totally biased. Totally wired. It still stands to this day, you know, all, all the musicians in the fall, I don't have any musos in, in the group, I never have had, you know. Every musician is self-taught, and, um, yeah. or a non-musician. You don't have to be weird, uh, have to be wired. Uh. You don't have to be a nightmare, punk, punk, shit, pop, fuck, suck, tick, tock, powder. You don't have to be strange, uh, have to be strangled. Uh. I always think I wouldn't have formed the group if I related to anybody. I don't want to be anybody. I don't want to be David Bowie. I don't want to be anybody. Mm. I wouldn't have formed the group if I wanted to be anybody. Mm. It doesn't interest me. Could you be happy without the group? Yeah. I'd be quite happy being a bus conductor. Could you? <laughs> no, not really, would it? <laughs> I don't, I don't have any truck with musicians at, at all. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't like guitarists, I don't like bass players, and I don't like drummers. So I don't like keyboard players. <laughs> so 
mean, that's why the four were formed, you know. It's like, just no, nothing good around, you know. Mm. But I've had, I've had classical musicians in the group and that. So, yeah. I've had accomplished musicians, you know. Mm. But they, they, they always say to me, you know, like uh, Rogers, who used to be in the group, he was like uh, from the London Symphony Orchestra, he, he said, you know, the great thing about the fall was that you have to unlearn everything. Smith's tendency towards producing the unusual led the fall into esoteric areas untried by any comparable rock act. The band's alliance with modern ballet dancer Michael Clark flourished in two Mark Smith plays, Hey Luciani, a drama based on the alleged murder of Pope John Paul, and I Am Curious Orange, a colourful historical musical. The fall took the plays onto the stages of Sadler's Wells, the Barbican and the Edinburgh Festival. The resulting mixture of critical acclaim and confusion gained Smith regular coverage in broadsheet arts pages. You'd be surprised with what people are fans of the fall, you know, it's painters and all that. The, blo the bloke who did, uh, who does our covers, you know, his paintings are in the Louvre, you know, in, in Paris, you know. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard of him myself, but... <laughs> he, does, he does the covers for nothing, man, that's unbelievable. A lot of people paint to the fall. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that. But that goes right back to the other day. People write novels to the fall. Yeah. The guy who did Silence of the Lambs wrote it, you know, it's like... Sure. You know, people like that, strange people. That guy who wrote Silence of the Lambs, Thomas Harris, was such a fan of the band that he proved instrumental in placing the dark rumblings of the early fall track Hit Priest under the film's terrifying climax. It was to become one of the most famous suspense sequences in Hollywood history. Smith was brought up and still lives in the Presswich district of Salford. This strangely exotic neighbourhood boasts an unusually diverse mixture of class, culture and religion. The local architecture, financed by money from the textile boom, is often a vision of decayed grandeur, casting long dark gothic shadows across the pavements. This evocative imagery, complete with religious and satanic overtones, deeply affected Smith and became manifest within the band's music and artwork. Oddly enough, the Americans, and in particular the Californians, found no difficulty in relating to the false start roots. We've got a good following in California, believe it or not. Mm. Massive. Fanatical. Mm. Are, are sometimes American audiences more devoted in, 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 in the sense that they'll accept everything you say or will they challenge, challenge things? Or? It's funny, man. America's made up like you know, you've talked about twenty different countries there yeah. in one country. Yeah. For instance, like we went to Cleveland and they hated our guts, you know. So I was very proud of. Mm. Why? What's what's problem in Cleveland? Is it? Well, you know, that's where all them fucking grunge bands are from. You right. know? Everybody's got long hair like this, you know. Yeah. You? They sat the fall. fucking loud guitars and all. They fucking hated our guts, you know. Yeah. That's great. Could you live in America? No. Definitely not. Enjoy I've, it. I've lived in uh, Chicago for a while. Mm. Yes. Well, that's interesting you should say that. Chicago is one place that you know I could I could sort of see as a parallel with Edinburgh or something. Chicago is very like Manchester, actually. Yeah, right, yeah. Guns going off every night. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. We're not Los Angeles. No way. Could not live in Los Angeles yeah. for all the money and the fucking. Well, world. A, a lot of artists. Um, like Billy Idol and all that, I mean. Well, no, 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 no. People like Leonard Cohen and people like that say they, they live there because it, they, they feel as though they're on the edge and it's like an inspirational place to live. Yeah, it's at all. It's fucking bored, most boring town in the world, I think. It's the most boring city I've ever been to in my life. And I've stayed there months on end in the best bits as well. Yeah. 
Sunset, Hollywood, Santa Monica. Horrible. Everybody gets up at six o'clock, goes to bed at half nine. If you have a beer, you're a tramp. Who knows? Yeah. Can't walk anywhere. It's horrible. Nirvana's tried to get on the bus in LA. Yeah. Steve won't let them on. <laughs> they want a lift home, can you believe this? Yeah, okay, yeah, they are left out. They're fucking, they're fucking tramps, man. <laughs> Can you believe that? You know what, what's his what's his wife called? Uh, that actress, Courtney. Uh, she fucking stood outside the bus when we came out of the gig like this. <laughs>